human sacrifices, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. One of the things that's really bumming me out about this coronavirus is we're missing out on so much good baseball. Little League World Series, college baseball, college softball, and one of my personal favorites, the World Baseball Classic. Yes, this is the first hat from the very first World Baseball Classic when Japan won. It is one of my favorite themes that baseball has done. This is absolutely one of the greatest themes for baseball is having a World Baseball Classic. Real quick, great positive news coming out of SNY.TV, which is Mets blog today, April 21st, is something called the Texas Plan. Now, some of you heard of the plans that are in place that when Major League Baseball comes back, these are plans to help us get games together. Um, well, the Texas Plan, um, along with the Arizona Plan, the Grapefruit Plan, I like the Texas Plan. The Texas plan, plan is basically saying... Um, you know, three locations, those locations will have rough stadiums so you can play multiple games per day so we can get one, some teams to play in the morning, another group of teams to play in the afternoon. Um, it's a plan that's on the table. Um, I really like this. Um, the only thing is the commissioner, Rob Manfred, has said that, you know, safety first before baseball comes back. Uh, but what's great is all these plans are being drawn up. They're being thrown on the table of Major League Baseball so that when we do come around and Corona's gone, We'll be ready to have some baseball. Uh, this is actually a continuation of last week from episode two of the baseball sign stealing scandal with Houston Astros. Um, repercussions. One thing I want to talk about the baseball scandal repercussions. I don't see a lot of repercussions. Houston's already been punished with first and second round picks um, through 2020 and 2021 drafts. They've lost, fired their GM, their manager, $5 million fine. What I see this mainly is more of a shame on you world tour when Houston comes back. I see more fans being involved and fans being upset. There are some teams like the Dodgers that are talking about uh, reimbursing uh, ticket holders. I don't see a lot of retaliation by players. There is going to be some pegging going on, but I don't see a lot. And here's why. If you're in New York and you're playing Houston and you got Garrett Cole on the mound making $36 million, you got Gene Carlo in the lineup for you making $29 million, and you got Jose Altuve making $29 million. What usually happens when you pay, you know, play the pay game? You pay the best players. So let's say Jose's up there. Do you really want Garrett, Pig, and Jose, and then Mounds charging and, and stuff like that? Trust me, both ownerships do not want that. And then what happens if you hit Houston's best player when Gene Carlo comes up or Aaron Judge? Uh, but they're going to get pegged. You don't want a player to get hit on the wrist and that $30 million a year player is gone. So I don't see a lot. I do see some things happening, but I don't think it's going to be what people want or what people that want UFC to transfer on over to Major League Baseball. It's not going to happen. All right, I'm going to wrap up the two parts of the baseball sign stealing scandal by Houston. It's interesting. 72% uh, thought additional steps should have been taken against Houston players. Totally agree. 86%. Uh, I believe this is serious. Beijing baseball really needs to pay attention to that because that's a hell of a lot of people that think this is, you know, really serious for the sport. Uh, 49% uh, steroid versus Houston Astros sign. You know, that's a whole different vlog. I can, and I went into that last week. If you watched last week's video, I did touch on that, but that's a whole different vlog. And then same thing with Pete Rose. That's a whole different vlog. I can go into at least a three-part series with that. 76% of fans believe that it's uh, other teams are doing the same thing. That's three fourths of the fans that are in this poll. That's a lot, uh, and I think this is a this is something that to really illustrate this point that Rob Manfred did not want to go down the rabbit hole that far. He went so far down with Houston and then decided to stop. I think if you continued went down, you might have found some more players, more coaches. Um, even there was a former major league player who called out, uh, I think it was Tony Larusa from the '80s, claiming that Tony Larusa was doing that. So I, I think that. The more you go down the rabbit hole, I don't think it was necessary. I think it was a smart for Rob to just, the commissioner, to focus just on Houston and, uh, and you know, let, let it go because it's kind of damage control at this point. And then 60% uh, of fans, it's not going to change their attitude, which is fantastic. Baseball will be back. Uh, again, I think there's going to be a little bit of retaliation, but not much. And I think uh, it's mainly going to come from the fans. I think the fans are going to really let Houston uh, when they're on the road, they're going to really, really lay into them. 
Next subject on the docket is hitters. How hard is it to hit 300 in Major League Baseball? There's hundreds of players that play, but A, you have to have a certain amount of plate appearances, and you have, which is qualifying, but take a look at the list here. Only 17 hitters in all Major League Baseball, out of all the players, were able to hit 300. That's how hard it is. Look at Nelson Cruz. Dude's still doing it. I mean, was he up to 36 or something like that? Had a great season last year. Question for you. Is Nelson Cruz a Hall of Famer? Please make comments for me. Let me know what you think. Okay, we're going to move on to pitching. Uh, go ahead and take a look at the, the wins here for 2019 for Major League Baseball pitchers. There's a few guys at the top you're going to see often. You're going to see Grinke. You're going to see Verlander. Um, what's interesting about this list is when you get a chance, go to uh, and look at the stats. You'll see that wins and having a lower ERA don't always correlate. You can have a high ERA in a lot of wins. My case in point is Eduardo Rodriguez. The first couple games of the season last year, he got just raked over the coals. I mean, he got hit hard. So essentially, his ERA did not go under 5 until May 10th. And it never got underneath 4 until August 23rd. From August 17th on, he was solid. I mean, you look at his starts, other than the 24th game against uh, Texas with the 7 earned runs, but what's interesting about him is he's got a couple blips on the radar through the season where he just got hit really hard, and then he's got these, you know, these games of just fantastic pitching. So you can't always read into the ERA. You got to look a little bit deeper within the lines. But this is a good list of pitchers. I'll take any of them. Last but not least is fantasy. Um, how is coronavirus impacting fantasy sports? Well, for one, check with your commissioner. Um, are you going to have perpetual drafts? Are you going to redraft? Are you going to postpone drafts? Uh, my, I think the majority of guys out there and ladies are doing postponing the draft. Um, it makes more sense. And then also, I wouldn't make any big changes, and I'd keep an eye on uh, injuries. Um, take a example of Justin Verlander. If you had him in March and you're like, man, he's injured for six weeks. This is no good. But by the time coronavirus is gone and Major League Baseball comes back, Justin Verlander was supposed to have just six weeks with that injury. He's going to be back to probably 100%. Thank you very much for watching Baseball News Club videos. Please do us a big favor. Hit the subscribe button, like the video, and hit the bell for notifications. If you're on your cell phone, go to your settings and turn on notifications so we can notify you each week of our new videos that come out every Friday.